Hello study partner how was your day so today let's talk about rickettsia rickettsia has many names and many kinds of fevers and so it's kind of difficult to remember so i thought i'll choose this topic and simplify it from my end how much ever possible so rickettsia were initially considered as viruses because they were mostly intracellular and they had in, they were unable unable to grow in the cultures so later it was found out that no they are actually bacteria and they have few properties like they are, they can be gram stained they divide by binary fission it has muramic acid in their cell wall and they can they also contain metabolic enzymes and they are not dependent on the host cell they have both dna and rna they can be seen under light microscope and most importantly they are susceptible to antibiotics so rickettsia are now considered as bacteria which are intracellular so you will now remember very clearly that it is intracellular because initially they were confused to be viruses viruses are generally intracellular so now in this uh, so now it's a true bacteria which is intracellular and they are usually parasitic to arthropods especially like fleas lice ticks and mites so remember that they generally reside in these species so now classification of this rickettsia rickettsia has like four genera of rickettsiaceae family so rickettsia so in these four genera you have rickettsia orientia coxiella and erlichia i'm sure you won't, don't have any difficulty in remembering these but things get complicated even bit more and we'll try our best to simplify so rickettsia it causes two types of illnesses that is the typhus and the spotted fever next orientia it causes the scrub fever coxiella q fever erlichia causes erlichiosis and febrile illness so rickettsia these are very small and gram negative by their property so apart from the property they have these three types of antigens one is the group specific antigen which is there in all the rickettsiaceae one is the species specific antigen which is like strain specific few for rickettsia few for orientia and this is becomes very important when we discuss about weil felix reaction and for weil felix reaction is the third one that is your alkali stable polysaccharide antigen so this alkali stable polysaccharide antigen is of prime importance in your weil felix reaction okay so i'll talk about weil felix reaction when we talk about diagnosis now like i told you uh, of the various uh, types of illnesses they cause luckily we can classify them into typhus fevers spotted fevers and scrub fevers okay so these are the uh, uh, types of classifying them into first is typhus fever next is spotted fever next is scrub fever now in typhus fever you have three types that is epidemic brilzinger and endemic now what is epidemic epidemic is something which is of high prevalence in one particular area or suddenly it erupted and suddenly it just occurred in one particular area so epidemic goes something like this right this goes the curve of epidemic so in epidemic what happens epidemic is caused by class it is also called as classical typhus epidemic is caused by rickettsia pravazaki so ever actually instead of telling you p to p you rather remember it as much as possible without any mnemonics by watching my video again or just recollecting the way it is try your best not to go for any mnemonics try in a nice story in a simpler way so i have made this small tiny funny diagram so this guy gets infested by louse and where observe where head louse okay so what happens is this head louse is again it is it is carrying a parasite inside it and that parasite is your parasitic to the arthropod so that bacteria is your rickettsia provazaki so when this rickettsia provazaki is multiplying in the intestines or in the within the body of your head louse and this person who is infested scratches and makes tiny uh, scratches over his scalp so the infect infection that is the rickettsia provazaki enters this person's body so this is how this person gets the rickettsia infection and the organisms multiply in the lice gut and this is how the portal of entry is mainly through the feces of the louse so that time this patient develops something this property has a similar initially remember that we thought this was a virus right so something similar illness also comes in the guy like 
सिवियर हेड एक चिल्स जनरल जनरलाइज मायालजिया बॉडी पेन एक्स सो समथिंग लाइक दैट ओनली विल बी द सिम्टम्स ऑफ दिस रिकेसियल फीवर एंड ही हैज़ हाई फीवर वॉमिटिंग एंड रैश रैश आई डिस्कस इन कॉमन विथ एवरी थिंग सो दिस गाई हैज़ समथिंग लाइक अ वेरल फीवर एंड अ रैश ओके इफ दिस परसिस फॉर अ लॉन्गर टाइम इन अ माइल्डर फॉर्म और द पर्सन इज हैविंग द एंटीबॉडीज पॉजिटिव सेम थिंग फ्रॉम द रिकेसिया Provazaki this is called as Brilzinger disease or the recrudescent fever so in some people who recover completely from the epidemic typhus they may have some of the species left back in their body or it may persist in latent form in lymphoid organs for many many years and after it's something like your herpes which is latent and can get reactivated that's as simple as that and the reactivated form is your brilzinger disease so again this is fed again this is infected by uh, head louse so this person with head louse this guy this brilzinger guy with head louse is infective can transmit the rickettsia provozaki to his fellow to other persons as well so that's the only thing only, th- only just that this fatality in brilzinger disease is much much lower okay now next let's go to endemic typhus endemic typhus the word endemic it actually means like it's widespread it's there everywhere so how do you remember that epidemic is louse epidemic and brilzinger are kind of related so now you know that now you have to differentiate between epidemic and endemic okay how many of you have head louse right now hardly any like one or two persons might have so only in that house which has head louse one person who has head louse in one particular house only that house people are at risk so epidemic is one house that is remembering so epidemic the graph like this endemic endemic i'll tell you how many of you have rats and your rats at your place most of you most of you have rats most of you have the problem of rats at the place so many houses have rats so it's like kind of widespread so remember that epidemic is louse endemic is rat so something which only few people have in peaks so that is louse something which most of them have this problem with rats cockroaches lizards mosquitoes is something like everybody will be having everywhere so rats you remember it is endemic basically it was endemic in regions like mexico and stuff and that is how the name came so now you know that endemic is by the rat the word murine is the gen, uh, g- um, genus names for the rat so you can also remember it as uh, murine typhus endemic typhus or the murine typhus and again luckily for simplification it is called as rickettsia buzeri goes with the term mouse right so mouse forget the word rat now let's shift to mouse so endemic or murine typhus mouse by rickettsia museri okay so some people who want to remember extra stuffs like is if it's too basic for you please remember that it's also called as rickettsia typhi okay so this is widespread almost everybody is having it so it's like a mild illness not everybody suddenly completely dies in a particular area right so you have rat infestation and nobody um like suddenly in an entire area doesn't nobody gets magically vanished so remember that this is a milder illness when compared to the rickettsia provozaki the epidemic ones also here which is the arthropod vector so remember this mouse yeah my diagrams are very bad remember this mouse okay and remember x x x x on this what is this rat flea and why did i draw x x x because i want you to remember it as xenopsiella cheopis i'll spell it for you x e n o p s y w l a c h e o p i s so this is a rat flea that infest carries the infection from the rats to the humans so by the bite of the rat flea you get your endemic or murine typhus so this also has a similar viral prodrome and the s- symptoms are also similar except that there's a typical rash which we'll discuss later now let's 